All right, thank you everyone for joining us for the informational webinar, IANTA and USFS. My name is Bianca Mitchell. I am from Acoma Pueblo and I am IANTA's education manager. For those of you who are not familiar with IANTA, for nearly two decades, IANTA has served as a national voice for the native nations and communities engaged in cultural tourism. In addition to our webinar series, IANTA offers multiple ways to engage, including our upcoming American Indian Tourism Conference. Every year, IANTA holds its annual American Indian Tourism Conference, AITC, the only national conference dedicated to growing tourism in America's indigenous communities. I want to invite you to join us this year, so be sure to save the date for IANTA's 24th annual AITC, which will be held in October 24th through the 27th of this year at Harris Resort, Southern California, hosted by the Rencon Tribe of Lucenio Indians. At this time, I am pleased to introduce you to IANTA CEO, Sherry L. Rupert, who is Paiute and Washo. She has nearly two decades of executive level experience managing and promoting Native American tourism. As CEO of the only national association dedicated to indigenous tourism, she is the leading voice when it comes to advocating for travel and tourism as a significant economic driver in tribal nations. She also holds leadership positions on various national boards, including the board of directors for the US Travel Association, the America 250 Hospitality and Tourism Advisory Committee, and the Office of National Marine Sanctuary Systems Business Advisory Council under the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Department of Commerce. Sherry, welcome. You're on mute, Sherry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Bianca, uh, for that introduction. I appreciate that. Uh, as Bianca said, my name is Sherry Rupert, and I'm Paiute and Washo from the great state of Nevada. Just want to welcome you all here this morning uh, for this very important webinar and this very important information we're about to share with you. A little bit about IANTA's mission. Our mission is to define, introduce, grow, and sustain American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian tourism that honors traditions and values. IANTA is the only national organization specifically dedicated to advancing cultural tourism for American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians. Since 1999, IANTA has provided technical assistance and training to American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians to support the development and growth of cultural tourism. IANTA works with American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians to develop, grow, and sustain cultural tourism enterprises, businesses, and organizations. And I'm very pleased to introduce Ms. Toby Bloom. She is the National Program Manager, uh, Travel, Tourism, and Interpretation, for the U.S. Forest Service. And so Toby, if you'd like to add any more to that and to talk a little bit more about the project. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, thanks everybody for joining today. I was really excited to hear that there are so many folks uh, tuning in for this webinar. Uh, and I'm excited to be working with IANTA to disperse these Native Act funds this year uh, from the Forest Service and with IANTA as well. Uh, I'm coming to you today from the ancestral lands of the Nacogchank Indians. Uh, and I work at the headquarters of the U.S. Forest Service. And most of you probably already know that basically all of Forest Service managed lands are tribal lands. Um, many of the lands that the FS manages uh, borders present day tribal communities and reservations. And many of the sites that we manage are Indian ancestral sites. And so we collaborate with tribal governments Indian traditionalists, spiritual experts, tribal members, tribal historic preservation officers, uh, and others who wish to be involved in that uh, management of the lands that we manage. Um, we have a, an INFRA database. INFRA is just the acronym for our database, and that tracks information on all of our known cultural resources. Currently, that database contains about 410,000 known sites across national forest system lands. And this is more than any other public lands agency, and that number increases every day as more sites are found. And so the Forest Service already engages in regular consultation with tribes on how to manage visitation to these sites. And some of them are kept confidential to ensure that tribal visitation 
um, that non-tribal visitation is kept to an absolute minimum. Uh, many of you know that we also engage with tribes on co-management of several of our visitor centers. Uh, we've been working with IANTA for many years. Um, happily, uh, in the last two years, we've been working on the disbursement of these Native Act funds. Um, but we already had several already existing joint um, tribal tourism and interpretation projects, like at Chimney Rock National Monument, uh, that's about to have its 10th anniversary, uh, the Colville National Forest, Comanche National Grasslands, and that's just to name a few. Um, I think, you know, the big point and the take home for me is that we're really in a unique time right now in terms of funding and political will. And so it's important for us to strike while the iron is hot and work together in an ongoing way to identify potential opportunities and partners on the ground that can spur sustainable growth and economic returns through your local tourism and recreation economies. And so, you know, there are some changes to the process this year, and there are changes that I'm proud of, changes that I think are going to make things better. Um, make things more um, transparent uh, and make the, the decision making and the funding more equitable. So, you know, we looked hard at our grants and agreements process that we went through last year with the Native Act funds, and we found that in some cases, you know, policy requirements for cash matching or substantial co cash contributions have, in, have impeded our ability to expand this kind of work. And so I'll talk a little bit later about some of the changes that we've made today. Uh, but I'm really excited to be here and happy to answer any questions at the end. Thank you, Toby. So Toby mentioned the Native Act. And so I wanna talk a little bit about the Native Act. In 2016, the Native Act became public law 114-221. In 2018, IANTA entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Departments of Interior and Department of Commerce to formalize our role uh, pursuant to section 4D of the Native Act, specific to the identification and delivery of technical assistance and training related to travel and tourism. In 2022, IANTA entered into an agreement with the US Forest Service to distribute grants to support the implementation of the Native Act with the US Forest Service. The purpose of the Native Act is one, to enhance and integrate Native American tourism, to empower Native American communities, and to advance the national travel and tourism strategy. Two, to increase coordination and collaboration between federal tourism assets to support Native American tourism and bolster recreational travel and tourism. Three, to expand heritage and cultural tourism opportunities in the United States to spur economic development, create jobs and increase tourism revenues. And four, to enhance and improve self-determination and self-governance capabilities in the Native American community and to promote greater self-sufficiency. Five is to encourage Indian tribes, tribal organizations and Native Hawaiian organizations to engage more fully in Native American tourism activities, to increase visitation to rural and remote areas in the United States that are too difficult to access or are unknown to domestic travelers and international tourists. And six, to provide grants, loans, and technical assistance to Indian tribes, tribal organizations, and Native, Native Hawaiian organizations that will spur important infrastructure development, increase tourism capacity, and elevate living standards in Native, com Native American communities. And finally, to support the development of technologically innovative projects that will incorporate recreational travel and tourism information and data from federal assets to improve the visitor experience. So today, in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service, we're going to review the RFP issued for the Native Act, tribal projects and initiatives on or adjacent to U.S. Forest Service managed lands. The RFP is available on our website at www.ianta.org. 
And this webinar is being recorded and will also be available on our website. Um, please, uh, we're going to go ahead and take questions at the very end, as Toby mentioned in her um, last comments. So make a note of those and save those as we move forward um, with the slides here this morning. So a little bit about the grant award details. Um, this grant opportunity allows for a wide variety of projects and you'll have up to two years to complete the project if awarded. Your reporting requirements, depending on the length of the project, are to submit a semi-annual report and an annual report or final report. You're on mute, Toby. Yay, I'm still a human being and not a bot. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so eligibility. Um, the eligibility is very similar to if we were doing this directly through the Forest Service. Um, tribal nations, tribal enterprises, and native nonprofits that border and or have historic ties to the U.S. Forest Service managed lands are eligible to apply. And each of the terms was defined by Congress in the original statute um, in the Indian Self-Determination Act. So um, look to those legal definitions of Indian tribe, um, Native Hawaiian organization, and tribal organization. And if you don't see your entity as an eligible entity for these funds, we really encourage you to partner with tribes and other eligible entities. And again, all of those requirements about who is eligible and what kinds of projects are eligible are on the link that Sherry pointed out. Okay, so Native Act grant proposals will be reviewed based on five criteria, four of which will be reviewed based on a point scale with the last being included for consideration based on project location. So the first criteria area is, um, does the project or program spur important infrastructure development and or increase technical capacity? We're looking for tribally led initiatives with the potential to grow and expand impact over time or initiatives that are more mature and are ready to advance to the next stages of implementation. This criteria, if met, can receive a maximum of 10 points. The second criteria area, is the project or program proposal developing a clear case for implementation? Again, we're looking for a clear understanding of the project or program timeline what the project or program intends to achieve, how it will be achieved, and the specific tribe or tribes, and a reasonable estimate of the number of people that will be positively impacted. And this criteria, if met, can receive a maximum of 10 points as well. The third criteria area has three components to it with points awarded for each component. Is the project or program broadly supported? We are looking for projects and programs that are tribally driven with broad support for implementation. Successful proposals will include the following. Evidence of tribal support, and that is mandatory and will receive up to three points. A letter of cooperation from the local US Forest Service unit and that is mandatory as well, uh, and will receive up to two points. Letters of support or cooperation from other organizations that will collaborate on or be impacted by the project. And again, that one uh, will receive up to two points as well. So um, the criteria if met uh, for this one uh, can receive a maximum of seven points. The fourth criteria area is, does the organization have the capacity to implement the proposal? We're looking for proposals that demonstrate the ability and capacity to implement through staff expertise and overall capacity. 
This criteria, if met, can receive a maximum of five points. And the fifth criteria area is not awarded points as part of this process, but instead will be a consideration in making the grant awards. And that fifth criteria is project location will also be considered to ensure there is a distribution of potential projects across US Forest Service regions. So again, consideration only, no points, no points awarded for this criteria. All right, so we're gonna get a little interactive here. And again, this is uh, just to sort of understand the lay of the land. We would like to ask you a poll question and the poll should have just popped up on your screen to ask you um, which of the, which location is your proposed project in? And if you would please click on that and then we'll go over uh, the results in just a moment. Okay, it doesn't look like anybody else is voting. So I'll go ahead and end the poll. Okay. And share the results. All right. So uh, it looks like 56% of the respondents uh, are gonna be submitting proposals for the Pacific region, 18% um, from the Southwest region, 13% from the Alaska region, 8% uh, from the Plains region, 5% from the Midwest region, and I don't see anything from the Eastern region. So I hope that just means that folks didn't respond, but that we will get an equitable distribution of projects across all of the different regions. Thanks, Toby. So um, to, pair, to prepare your proposal, uh, please see the prompts and questions and required attachments on IANTA's website, and you can see the link here um, and under uh, the proposal information. So you should have all of the information um, that you need on the website here. And Toby, all you're right. kind of sharing some information on the, the evolution of these funds. Sure, um, I wanted to share this with everybody. I think folks within the Forest Service who worked on this program in FY21 are aware of this, but I want everybody to kind of understand the story of these funds. Um, we submitted, Forest Service submitted a proposal um, to our budget shop in FY, I think it was FY17 or 18, um, to house Native Act funds to work with tribes on tourism and interpretation. Uh, and then we didn't hear anything for a long time. And in FY21, um, the federal budgets came out pretty late that year, not as late as this year, uh, but they came out in late January of 2021. And we did not know we were getting funds, but we did. And so that was the million dollars that came to the Forest Service to implement Native Act projects. So um, since we were kind of caught unaware uh, we were lucky in that we had already solicited um, proposals from our Forest Service units about potential projects that these funds would fit under. Um, we made sure that we had proposals from all of the different regions, and then we funded almost all of the proposals. The only region that didn't have all of their proposals funded was Region 10, the Alaska region, just because they had so many proposals and, and uh, the dollar amount was a lot higher. So we funded three proposals from Alaska and then all of the other proposals um, from the different regions were funded. Um, but we still you know, got tripped up a little a bit. And so a couple of those things that were a little bit slow last year and things that were changing this year, instead of dispersing the funds to the Forest Service units, as Sherry mentioned, we are dispersing funds directly to the tribal entities that are submitting those proposals. And I think that helps everybody um, because there are lots of, uh, limitations around grants and agreements uh, when the funds go through um, the federal partner. And so we were trying to reduce some of that red tape by sending the funds directly to the tribes this year. And that has been enabled by working with IANTA. 
Um, like I said, it was tough to get funds into existing agreements, and now we'll kind of free that up um, this year by sending the money directly to uh, the folks who sent the proposal. Also last year, the projects had to be on Forest Service land. Now that we are dispersing the funds through IANTA, we have a lot more latitude about where these proposals can, can where the projects can happen. And so, as we mentioned before, it can be still be on Forest Service land, but it can also be adjacent to or nearby Forest Service land. So we're hoping that that opens up your ability to uh, really kind of focus on the proposals that are will have the most impact for your tribe and your community. And then the last piece was that 20% match requirement that I talked about earlier. Now, I want to be explicit and let everybody know that on July 22nd, so just a few weeks ago, the Forest Service announced that it will no longer require a 20% match from any tribe for any project, which is a fantastic advancement. That was not the case when we put this agreement together and we found out about the FY22 uh, funds, Native Act funds. But the outcome is the same. And what that means is there's no financial match for you all if your proposal gets selected this year. Um, and so, again, you know, this is an evolution. Again, we're the only federal land management agency who's received these funds. And my goal as the person administering these funds for the Forest Service is to really make sure that we're, do, you know, we have an equitable process and we're getting the word out to as many folks as we can. And also that we're not uh, encumbered by, um, you know, some of the, the challenges that we come under when we are dispersing funds through a federal entity. And so I, you know, have really appreciated the flexibility that we've gained by working with IANTA this year. And we'll continue to evolve this process uh, to make things, um, you know, more smooth and as transparent as possible and making sure that the funds have as much impact as possible. Sherry. Great. Thanks, Toby. So we're interested to find out if you plan to submit a proposal. So I'm going to put up uh, maybe another poll question. <laughs> and that is, do you plan to submit a proposal? So that's a yes or no. And we'll give you a few few seconds here to make your selection. Okay, we've got a lot of maybes in here. I'm gonna share these results. So you can see that um, today about 48% of you, almost half, uh, on the webinar today are going to be submitting a proposal. Uh, and another almost nearly half are, are maybe. So I'm assuming that uh, you have some questions for us. And um, so we're getting there. We're almost uh, to the question and answer section. Just wanted to share some final details um, before we move on uh, to the question and answer um, section. Respondents to this RFP are asked to submit their proposal via email to arichardson at ianta.org, and you can see the email there. Responses must be received no later than September 6, 2022 at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. That's coming up really quickly, so uh, make sure that you get your proposals uh, prepared. Responses should be clearly marked with the submitting party's name in the regarding or subject line and emailed to the contact person as listed above. So coming up quick. All right, here we are, question and answers. So um, if you can go ahead and, and put your questions uh, into the question and answer box there. I see that we have a few here, um, Toby. When, the first one was, can you explain the regions? We probably should have done that when, when we were uh, doing the poll question, but the regions that were up there were IANTA's regions. And um, so, and that was really for our information on the webinar here today. It, it no way affects um, your ability to 
um, apply uh, for the, the funding, just kind of letting us know um, where you are all at uh, from today's webinar. Yeah, and I will uh, just jump on that and explain that the regions for the Forest Service are slightly different. Um, it's a little confusing. We have uh, up to region 10, but we don't have a region seven anymore because uh, region seven and eight were combined. Um, and uh, it, it really honestly, like the regions aren't, it doesn't really matter what the regions are and kind of what the boundaries are. You can certainly look up forest service regions and there are very good maps online. But again, like we said, there won't be any points um, awarded specifically because of the region you're in, but we do wanna try and honor, uh, make sure that there is work going on in all nine of the forest service regions if we receive proposals for all of them. So that will be a consideration. Uh, it just won't receive any points. Um, and while we're answering the other questions, I'll actually, I'll, I'll dig up a, a map of the Forest Service region so you all can take a look at those. Okay. Uh, and then Jim asks, uh, our reservation is 640,000 acres and borders U.S. forest lands. And our tourism resort is in the middle of the reservation. Does this qualify? Yes, I mean, that fits within the definition of, of uh, bordering Forest Service land, so I'll say yes. Okay. All right, and then Dave asks, is indirect covered on this grant? Dave, do you wanna come on and explain a little bit what you mean? I'm assuming you're talking about a specific fee, but why don't you, uh, if you wouldn't, are, you, are they able to un uh, unmute themselves, Sherry? Mm. I mean, I guess the answer is any any sort of uh, budgetary item should be covered in your proposal. Um, there is a you know a, a budget explanation required in the proposal. Terry, if you can go into the uh, participants, uh -huh. see panelists and attendees, and yeah. if Dave wants to get on, you just go to his name, and then give him the ability to to um, be live. And was that Dave Eubank? Yep. Okay. All right. I'm allowing Dave to talk. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, hey. How are y'all? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, um, we, uh, with a lot of grant um, uh, applications, they will allow you to have your indirect costs covered. And what that basically means is, it's, I don't know, the best way I can uh, explain it is it's like your overhead costs, your costs of doing business. Some grant uh, fundees um, cover those and some don't allow you to put those in there. So that's just what I was asking about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's allowed. You know, whatever you put in your proposal uh, will sort of be part of what is judged. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Sure. <clears throat> Okay, um, down to Amanda. Will you fund one-year cultural tourism planning grants? Sure. You have two years to complete the project, but we're not saying that the project has to last two years. There's just a time limit of when it needs to be completed. Okay, and then... Bill asks, do you have any sense of the approximate number of grants you will make? No, I think that's going to depend largely on the amounts of, of the proposals. Um, we'll know, you know, we don't know what, what any of the proposals look like or what their amounts are going to be until we get them. And Melissa asks, will a recording and slides be shared? And the answer to that is yes. We will post that on the IANTA website. And then Anne asks, would you define nearby as a location? Ooh, maybe unmute Anne. I think I, I'm not quite sure I understand. Uh, would you define nearby as a location? Okay, uh, when we say nearby, really what this relates to is the fact that you need a mandatory letter of cooperation from a forest service unit. 
So if you're two to three hours from a forest service unit and you've never worked with them before, you know, that's really what that's about. I, I wouldn't say that there's any sort of geographic, like, you know, five miles or three miles. It's um, having a working relationship with a, a local forest service unit. So Anna is on. Okay, so uh, our specific situation is we have um, the, our, our tribal land is adjacent to Forest Service, um, but we have a project. Um, the tribe owns a, a piece of land that's off the reservation, and so it's it's it is not specifically adjacent to Forest Service lands, even though the tribe itself is. Um, and we are interested in placing a project there on those, on those um, purchased tribal lands. Would that be eligible? It's eligible. Um, you know, we can't really speak to the fitness or the, you know, is it a, is it a good project kind of thing, but yes, it's eligible. Okay, thanks. Lynn asks, we have a very small reservation, but a large court established usual and accustomed area adjacent and a long history of working with the Forest Service. Do we qualify? Uh, if the entity that is submitting the proposal is one of the ones that was listed in the, in the requirements, then yes, you are eligible. Will this grant opportunity also be offered next year? We are updating our SEDS plan and will likely be more prepared for grant after completion. Um, this is a great question. I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, these funds are congressionally allocated. And so we don't know if we're getting Native Act funds until the budget actually comes out. Um, we have, you know, in seeing the budget markups for FY23, it looks like there will be funds, but we don't have any guarantees until uh, the budget is finalized. Right. Um, Ivan is asking, what are the budget categories? What are the budget categories? That's up to the person submitting the proposal. We don't have any required categories. Richard asks, how close to a national forest does the tribe need to be? Uh, yeah, and I think this gets back to the same question. Um, there's not like a, a specific geographic designation, like distance, you know, miles wise or whatever measurement you use. It's more about, um, you know, is there a forest service unit that you work with that is invested in, in this project with you or is willing to work on this project with you? Stacy asks, what is the average funding awarded for each project? We only have um, a range at this point, and the range is 25,000 to 250,000. So there's not really an average yet. We won't know until we get the project proposals. Dorothy asks, we have a special use permit with the Forest Service. Do we qualify? Um, a special use permit does not qualify you or disqualify you uh, for the, for the um, submission of a proposal. Um, it's more, you need to consult the specific, um, uh, the requirements that Sherry mentioned before. Um, I would imagine that probably having a permit with the Forest Service means that it will be easier for you to get that letter of cooperation and it might have more detail in it, but, uh, having a special use permit does not qualify you or disqualify you. Uh, Dave is asking, what is the total grant funds for this year? I believe the exact number is 909,000. Uh, a question from Stacia, when is funding distributed? We want to make sure we meet your project timelines. Um, set, uh, what did we say? October, November, the funds are being distributed. I think that was the timeline. It's not like an exact date, um, but yeah, I think October or November of this year. And then the, the projects need to be complete by December, 2024. 
Nolan Brown, Shoshone Bannock tribes says, our tribes have working relationships with several forest service units in areas in Idaho, Montana and Wyoming. How do we submit for interpretive projects spanning multiple forest service areas? Um, I think the submission process would be the same. I think um, it would benefit you to have letters of cooperation from each of the units that you will be working with on these projects. Rosalie asks, are non-federally recognized tribes eligible due to the have historic ties to US Forest Service managed lands requirement? No, we do have to um, stick with the federal definitions, uh, the tribal definitions that I went over in the earlier slide. So we will be sticking to those definitions for eligibility requirements. And then this is another question um, in regard to high indirect or indirect cost rates. Will a high indirect rate prevent us from getting funded? Hmm, I mean, I, I... I don't, a high indirect rate, I, I don't know the specific number that you're talking about. I mean, just in general, I think probably what folks are looking for is a return on investment. So theoretically, if 75% of your funding went to an overhead rate, that's probably a lot. Uh, but I can't speak directly to sort of what, what those numbers would look like. Uh, yeah. And again, you know, the eligibility requirements are, are listed and Sherry went over those. Yeah, I would say put your proposal in. Bill says, uh, we are a tribal museum. Do we need a letter from tribal government with our application? Yes, uh, tribal support uh, was one of the requirements uh, for the proposals. And so everybody needs, needs, I mean, I'm not saying specifically a letter, but demonstration of tribal support is mandatory for all of the proposals. All right. Um, that's, I think we've answered all of the ones that have been typed in. Um, so if you have any questions, please let us know now. Go ahead and type those into the question and answer box. Let me check the, the chat here. I just got one in. Okay, from Jim. We are reopening our Tribal Hot Springs Resort after being closed for three years. Major budget is focused on the pool, hot spring, and structural lodging. We have 20 traditional teepee sites, but the teepees canvas materials are no longer usable. Our limited tribal funding at this point has to exclude the 110,000 needed to replace all the teepee with traditional branding. Would this be a possible option? Yeah, we can't really speak to the fitness of specific proposals until we receive the proposals and they'll all be rated on the same eligibility requirements that Sherry provided. So I can't really comment on a specific project right now, but I wanna encourage anybody who is saying, you know, is this a good project? Should we do this? Submit your proposal. You're gonna get 100% no if you don't submit a proposal, so you might as well submit. We right. really wanna see all of your projects. All right, I think, I think that's all the questions that I see right now. Um, but as, as Toby said, I would encourage everybody to submit their best proposal. Uh, make sure you have your um, letter from the Forest Service. And I would highly encourage uh, any other partners or collaborators that you have um, to submit their support letters as well. And if there aren't any other questions, uh, I just wanna thank Toby um, for joining us today and your ongoing support of the Native Act and for our partnership uh, with the US Forest Service. And just a note before we go, um, this session has been recorded and will be emailed to all registrants 
please follow us at ianta.org backslash webinar for future webinars hosted by IANTA. And if you're not a member of IANTA and would like to be, please contact J Gail Shehak. She is our Tribal Relations and Outreach Manager. And you can do so by visiting our website at ianta.org. We appreciate you being here today. And uh, I just hope that you have a, a, a great day and a great week. And uh, we hope that this has been helpful and we look forward to receiving your proposals. Good luck to all of you. Thanks everyone. Goodbye. All right. Thank you, Toby. Thank you. I think that went very well.